Please feel free to ask questions as we go. This is my art journal here. It is Stillman and Burn. It is not their heavyweight paper. It's their thinner weight paper. It's called Epsilon. I love it because it can still hold a lot of paint. Um, plus it's got twice as many pages. So uh, just a disposable palette. This is how I make my grids. Someone asked me the other day, how do you make those nice grids? I just eyeball it and trace a little um, post-it note. Use whatever you want. Whereas you could cut a square and just trace it. But if you wanted to spend all that time measuring, go for it. I'm not interested in doing all that math. So I just trace out some squares so that I can do color. Now today I'm going to go back to my old school methods of painting with color, which is to use the primaries. I have courses packed filled with information about this. I'm using fluid. I have primary cyan primary magenta, and primary yellow. If you've never seen me make a color wheel and mix all the colors with just these three colors, uh, what can I say? But you can learn all about my color theory. Plus, I've got courses online. So I'm just going to put a little bit of blue. That's cyan. So these are like printmakers colors that the paint, paint companies now use. Primary magenta which is, you know, I'm going to put a little more of that because I really love the warmer colors and plenty of primary yellow. But what about lighting, lightening it up? I use my Liquitex gesso, professional gesso, because it's nice and fluid, very opaque, more affordable. Those are my favorite. Now, to do this, we're going to do, here's my color principle for you, besides, hopefully these colors are showing up fine for you. Besides the fact that, you know, it's fairly um, elementary, if you will, blue, red, yellow, and you can mix a, quite a, a huge rainbow of colors. Of course, we're using primary magenta, which is on the pink side of things and cyan, which is like a good neutral blue, maybe a little bit on the cool side. But every color that you want to mix, there's a way to mix it here with some limitations, but generally speaking, my color principles, I want you to think of these. One, we've got to think of color as that has value. We want proportion with our color, which means that we don't want an equal amount of everything. So choose your dominant color and then your subdominant colors. So I'm going to just show you how to make my favorite color right now. Hopefully the light is right. There's that beautiful cyan blue. And who loves teal? You like teal? A little bit of yellow. And then look at this. Voila! There you have it. Just that easy. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> I just made a favorite color right there. So I might choose, I can even use more white, I might choose that to be the dominant color on this one, which means that the main focal color will be um, the teal and then it might have some sub colors. What if I decided that I didn't want it so purely saturated? I'm gonna take just a teeny bit of more colors here and we're going to create like a nice muddy color because when we have mud or all of the colors mixed together we have a really good tinting um, gray which comes instead of making black and white to make gray we've made all the colors to make gray and so it's going to be a lot more interesting than using gray or black so and then I just want to show you how um, we can make this gorgeous, like grayish blue. See, I love that. That's how you get a nice, beautiful neutral. And also it's harmonizing because we have a little bit of every color in there. I'm just gonna pick a different square. I pick different squares as I go and I'm just playing and scribbling. So that one's just a little more muted and neutral than the pure saturated color there. And I'm gonna just get whatever's on here get it off and I'm not making anything in particular just kind of some abstract marks I'm gonna wash my brush really well in between I want to mix up another one of my very favorite colors look at this that's the primary magenta and I love pinks and peaches 
and here's a little bit of yellow mixing in it and then we can come in with that and we're making this really pretty peachy pink color who doesn't love that color look at that you can get a little bit of white and I've got a very light pink I'm just playing today and like using some of my own personal color theories if you remember one thing one thing when you're making art just one remember variation is key because when you have variation you're going to have far more interest far more interesting work to say the least so I'm just making a few marks here and there and then this one's going to be dark it's got a little purple mixed in it by accident there we go and I'm just layering as I go. So this is something you can do to kind of do, uh, for lack of a better description, just like a, a color study grid and kind of see which colors you like together and see if you can get it on that value and proportion. So I want something green now. Let's put in a lot more yellow. And now we've got this nice lime green, right? Lime green next to the pink. That it looks, that's not even lime, that's Christmas tree. Here's lime. There you go. But what if you want it even more? Here, hang on, I've got a lot of paint in my brush. I'm going to do this for you. So we're getting this, we've got this bright, bright green, and you're like, that's so saturated. Except for in spring, how bright are the trees, really? So I want you to think of this. If you can, if you make up a color wheel, which I teach this in a lot of my courses, it comes free with every lesson. Every course that you sign up with has the foundation lessons. I'm going to take just a teeny little, teeny little drip of red, and I'm mixing it in with that green, and the opposite color on a color wheel will make a, a nice olive, like a muted green for you. See? I can I can make it even more muted if I want. Look at how really nice olive color that is. I love it. I love making muted greens. Those are probably my favorite right now. I'm thinking that this could use a little bit of muted. Pink and green just belong together, don't they? All right, I'm going to clean this. We're playing, right? We're just playing with colors and testing how they work. Okay, so you like purple? Say you like purple. Here's your here's your blue. I want you to just test all of these out. And now we've made a really dark, typical purple. That's a very bluish purple. What if I want it more of a violet? We're going to add more of this magenta, make it more violet. You want it lavender? There you go. There's lavender. But what if you, yeah, that's a nice color. I'm just going to put it right here so we can just play with these different colors. Just a few marks, a few rainbow colors in here. But what if you don't want such a pure purple? What if that is just too much for you? You've mixed up this color and you're like, oh, that is so purpley purple. I want a plum color. I want something that's a little more soft and muted. I'm going to put a little white in there so you can see the color. And you're like, that is just too Barney purple. I want you to think of opposite. So opposite of purple on the color wheel is yellow. So I'm just going to take a little teeny bit of yellow and I'm putting it in there and I want you to see how it's changing the color completely. Just a little bit more. And it looks dirty and gray, but if I put in white, look at how pretty that purpley purple color starts looking and then we can have let's see we'll just give it its own a little bit of gray so it's, it's almost too gray there we go see so you can be like little alchemists and making your colors there we go it's a little more purple now I'm, I like the muted purple better than I like the, the actual dark purple. Why don't you start looking at color more deeply? Uh, how do you think that the colors were made? Like, 
if you understand the color wheel and you start practicing with color, then you can look at color more closely and say, okay, I understand color better enough now that I know yellow, yellow and red make orange, you know, blue, yellow and blue make green. But if I'm getting this dark earthy green, then you start understanding what it takes to get to that color by playing like this. There's no end result for lack of a better description there's nothing at the end of this other than just self-study you know that I get to play and see what happens when I mix colors and let my curiosity run wild I, I feel like this is just a fun way to let loose and warm up I highly recommend practicing uh, the play that's what I think of this is it's practicing playtime making this a little bit more gray by using what was on this brush There we go. There we go. So I wanted to also ask you, what do you do if you don't have black? We've talked about making gray, but can you make a really dark color? Because value is really important. And when we talk about value, that's the range of lights to darks. If you want an interesting pa painting and you're going by the rule that I set, which is variation is key. Okay, so I've made purple and my goal right now is to add in yellow because now we're going to get this really dark. We're mixing back and forth until we get this really dark color. And that's like having black without actually using black. But look at that. Now you're going to have your value. Look at how that looks like. It's almost black. It's not quite, it's got a little richness to it. If you can see it in person, you would know. I love that dark next to pink. Scaling up. I think scaling up is challenging because um, you're going to use different tools. You're going to use different, a whole lot more paint. And so when you're so used to using a small amount of paint, then that becomes kind of challenging, like, um, you know, getting used to and comfortable with large brushes, large paint, large surfaces. And then so your ideas don't translate quite as easily. But I do work through the entire process of scaling up in my Lush Landscapes course. We go from, we make a bunch of these small ones, then we work a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and then I go giant, using the same ideas and seeing how it changes along the way. But the tips on scaling up is sometimes what the goal is, is to look at something you loved, a color combination, um, a mark that you made, or a composition that you love. And not really like over um, over work trying to, for, for lack of a better description, but trying to copy the exact same thing from yourself. I don't really want to use orange in this, so I'm going to just get some white and then I'm going to make it a pale peach. There we go. Now, look at that. That pale orange next to the black, even though those are kind of Halloween colors. But scaling is really, I think when you do projects like this and you want to scale, the idea is really more to use the ideas as a jumping point for the next project. I don't like that yellow in, in this, so I'm just going to paint right over it. Start thinking about mark making along the way. So right now I'm just kind of playing with what I have here on this surface. To make teal, you take that primary cyan, a little bit of yellow, you've got this beautiful bluish color, add white and it becomes more teal. So there's your, your teal and turquoise can be made. If you don't have it on hand, that's the secret. I've been really drawn to warm colors, so I'm looking at these blues and I'm like, I do not know if I like the blues at the moment. I want to get in here with this dirtier color. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it, a little bit of magenta, and we're going to make it more gray. 
I'm like really liking these neutrals. Look at how pretty that gray is. I didn't have to use black to make these colors. And that's really fun to be able to make those colors that you need without ever needing anything more than what's right here. There we go. Let's cover that up. So I'm just, I'm testing out. I think that there's a lot going on here. I don't want to overdo it, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in some color and some, some of these other areas. There we go. I like that kind of minty aqua green. There we go. That's fun. I'm putting just little lines right now. It seems crazy to be adding black, but I've been seeing it show up so much more in other people's artwork, and I'm like really fascinated by black, so I'm just going to go with it today and show you how beautiful black looks in contrast to all the pretty colors. Um, I got a smaller detailed brush. Let's see what we could do with that. I'm thinking we need more pink, always more pink. So here's a really pretty, just the magenta can go really bright pink. Pink, yes. Who's a pink lover? Raise your hand. I don't know. If you don't like pink, then you probably don't want to follow me because everything I do is pink. I like my pink a little more on the warm side, which means adding yellow, as you might have just seen me do. That makes it a little more orangey, corally, a little less bubble gummy. Um, so I'm playing. Do you see how this gives you the freedom to just kind of like play and look at compositions and not really worry about the final outcome because you're just, you know, and not one of these squares has um, all the colors in it because when you do all the colors, then you're missing out on that proportion and variation. So, I would love to work more abstract. I've done abstract landscapes, I've done abstract florals. But my commitment to purely non-objective abstract has, hasn't has happened yet because I have my own fears that set in. What if I'm not good enough? What if I lose all of my followers because they think I'm crazy for doing abstract? What if... I don't know. So if you ever have doubts, I want you to know that so do I. So I am just playing now. I mi I've mixed colors. I am playing. I am letting you know my thoughts as I go, which is I'm scared too to make work that's out of my comfort zone, but it's what I really know I need to do if I'm going to push to the next level. Making um, abstract artwork is fascinating to me, but it's also like terrifying because, you know, I don't know enough about it yet, except for what I've taught myself and all the other things that I've done. And my florals and my landscapes are abstract, but I'm gonna play around with another color here, a little more orange. So I just wanna let you know that you're not alone. See that warm yellow? Look at how pretty that warm yellow, that's almost the like orangish yellow, looks next to the teal right there. That's because they're opposite on the color wheel. So you're really going to end up with a, a really good mix there. So if you guys are worried about, you know, your own imposter syndrome and fear and messing up, I just want you to know you're not alone. We're all in it together. We all struggle with the same kinds of things. But it's the fun, this is the fun thing about what I'm doing right now is that I'm, I've taken the pressure off of perfection. I'm coming in with just a little more layers here. Um, so the more you do it, the easier it gets. I'm putting orange in that blue because that'll dirty it up. And when it's dirty, it makes a much more interesting color. Look at that. All right now, so I'm using my dirty brush in the orange. And what does that make with the orange? It makes a nice muddy, earthy color. And I do that because when when you make these earthy colors, it contrasts beautifully with like all of the, look at how pretty that color is next to the peach. That's like a, 
a dirty muddy orangey green I don't even know but those muddy colors is what is giving you know more interest to the whole um, the whole design so you guys just remember when you buy any of my art courses you get all the foundation lessons included no extra charge that would mean like how to use all your supplies, all the color theory, value, composition and design. Um, I really thought through, I wanted to make sure that whatever course you take from me, you're not going to be struggling with some of the basic foundation knowledge. But the courses themselves usually push you to think a little differently from what you usually think with your art so that you can start making, you know, choices on your own, how you want to show up. What happened over here? I guess we can just make pink, pinkish pink. So if you had fun today, if you guys do grids, let me know. I'd love to see how your grids turn out. I've done so many different kinds of grids. This is the first time I've really done grids like this that are more um, chunky abstract, for lack of a better description. This would be really fun to pull out like some acrylic Posca pens. If you've ever used that before, at the end, you could like really put some details and marks on it. Um, I'm going to get some more white. And then I think we're about done. Dirty brush white, which means it's got some color. All right, what do you think? That was fun. Very different for me, but it was a lot of fun to be able to do this. I hope that you enjoyed this little color demo today. I just find that my method works best with acrylic, but that's just my preference. The best thing you can do is just play with the supplies that you have. Try out everything until you find the medium that works perfect for you. Color principle works the same no matter what you do. Okay? <laughs>